Club Football Estrada Amadora is a Portuguese club based in Amadora, just northwest of Lisbon. It is the successor to Club de Football Estrela de Amadora, founded in 1932 and extinct in 2011 due to financial problems and ultimately bankruptcy. This club was newly founded in 2020 when Club Desportivo Estrela merged with Club Sintra Football and took place of the team in the third tier, the Campitano de Portugal. In real life, the team is competing in the Primera Liga after winning promotion from Liga Portugal 2 in the 2022-2023 season. However, we are using FM23, so we'll be taking over this side in the Liga Portugal 2 to see if we can replicate their real-life success. Going into this rebuild, we are going to need a tactic to replicate that success, and we will be using GYR's Goal Getter version 2 to try and outscore everyone that we face. And this is what the team looks like in-game in that tactic. We have some good players in key positions, but several of them are currently on loan at the club. In the final third, we have Gustavo Henrique on the wing and Kikas up top, but sadly both of these players are not ours. However, at the back, we do have some key talents that do belong to the club. In that, we have Bruno Biradido, a 31-year-old Brazilian goalkeeper who looked great for this level, but is lacking in some key areas for me when looking at a goalkeeper. And in the left-back spot, we have another Brazilian in Mansur who is supremely well-rounded and should be a real threat for us up and down this left-hand side. The progression of this team since being reformed after bankruptcy is remarkable and I need to make promotion happen in season number one to match their real-life success. Looking at the league odds for the season, we are 7-2 to win the title and predicted to finish in third, which would see me qualify for the promotion slash relegation playoff. Before we crack on with the rest of the video, I do have to talk to you about a new game that I have been playing recently. As we're getting into the lull period of FM23, this is the new game that you guys need to be playing. Ultimate Champions is the free-to-play digital trading card game where real-world performance on the pitch impacts the rewards you can get in-game. Dive deep into a world of over 93 officially licensed football clubs and strategize, select, and lead your dream team to glory. Use your footballing knowledge to level up your team, or if you want to give them a little bit of a boost, you can head to the store and open some packs with their in-game currency MGC or champ tokens. Compete in weekly football competitions or join Join my mini league to prove that you have a better footballing IQ than me. Check out Ultimate Champions using the link in the description. Kicking off the results for Season 1, let's talk about the Allianz Cup. This competition kicks off with a four-team group phase and only one team will be progressing to the next round. And we were drawn in Group C alongside Moriens, Aruca and Benfica. We actually managed some great results in this competition and even shared a 3-3 draw with Benfica to advance at the top of the group. This meant that later in the season, we were drawn against Giants Porto in the quarterfinals. We were at home for the game, but the overall quality of Porto was too good to deny as they ran out to a quick 3-0 lead. Kikas did manage to bag a consolation goal for us, but we eventually slumped to a 5-1 defeat and exited the competition. The other domestic cup competition is the Taca de Portugal placard. This is the FA Cup, the Copa del Rey, the DFB Poco equivalent. We entered the competition in the second round where we put Sao João de Ver away comfortably thanks to a hat-trick from Ronaldo Tavares in what was a treat for the eyes with this horrible, horrible kick clash. However, our cut run would come to an end in the next round thanks to top flight side Santa Clara. Ronald gave us the lead at the start of the second half, but his strike was cancelled out by Walter Gonzalez with just four minutes remaining. And sadly, in extra time, Rildo bagged all, the all-important goal to see us exit the competition and focus exclusively on the league. And speaking of the league, our form was pretty consistent all season, and we only suffered three defeats, which actually saw us lift the second division title, winning it by a staggering 25 points. This was largely down to some unbelievable individual performances from Ronaldo Tavares who picked up the league's golden boot with 31 goals in the season and he was chased all the way by teammate Kikas who had 25 himself. And on the assist side of things our team went off as we had the top five assisters in the league. That is pure dominance. Promotion does mean we are back to the top flight next season and the board have given me a transfer budget of just under £5 million and our wage budget has increased by over 300%. 
So let's get to work. Going into season two, I knew we had to make huge strides forward to be able to compete in the league this season. And that's why we picked up 21, yes, 21 new players with a total spend of 4.9 million pounds. Key additions in this spree were striker Kikas, who was on loan with us last season. We turned that into a permanent deal, which cost us £450,000. On the left wing, we picked up Senussi El Hadi, who came in from Kuwait on a free transfer. And in the right back spot, we pulled in Claudio Vink from Martimo again on a free transfer. All of these additions have allowed me to build a nice balanced squad for our return to the Portuguese top flight. And competitions wise, this is how we are looking this season. League wise, we are actually predicted to finish in 12th with title odds of 400 to 1. So it looks like all of these summer acquisitions have drastically improved us. However, the board is more reserved than their expectations as they only expect us to avoid the drop. Let's start off again by talking about our Allianz Cup performance. We flew through the first round thanks to four goals from Ronaldo Tavares before knocking off 10-man Vizela in the second round. This set up the group phase where we will come up against Sporting and La Ruka as this is where our journey came to an end. We lost on the road to Sporting and drew with Aruka, meaning we finished bottom of our group and exited the competition. Things didn't actually go much better in the Portuguese Cup either. We advanced past Paredes in the third round before being handed a tough tie at home to Benfica. João Mario opened the scoring from the penalty spot before Ronaldo Tavares made the tie all level just 15 minutes later. The tie progressed into extra time where Leandro Carvalho gave us the lead in the 91st minute, only to have a historic win snatched from us in the 120th minute with Andre Silva scoring at the death. This meant penalties would be the deciding factor, but sadly, Reese and Leandro Carvalho missed their spot kicks to give wonder kid Antonio Silva the opportunity to win the game which he did, firing past our goalkeeper. Back in the Liga Portugal, we had some impressive results to kickstart the season and managed to stay largely consistent to finish in fifth and qualify for next season's Europa Conference League. We were still behind all of the league's big boys, but we were definitely the best of the rest, finishing 11 points behind winners Porto. So Estrella will be in continental competition next season. And what did the board reward us with? Yeah, nothing. We have just over £6,000 in our transfer budget and £40,000 a week in wage budget to work with. So I best get wheeling and dealing. The board didn't give me any additional funds, so I had to create my own money. And 16 players ended up departing the club for a total of £1.2 On the incoming side, we spent £1.5 mainly as a loan fee, but also managed to add in nine additional free transfers. Mika Biereth arrived from Arsenal on a free transfer to replace the outgoing Kikas who joined Academico for 625k. Harry Winks joined from Spurs on a free transfer to really bolster our midfield options and we've loaned in Chelsea man Andre Santos to play alongside him once he gets back from the Olympics. With these additions, this is how we're shaping up for Season 3, and competition-wise, we've added the Europa Conference League to the mix, where we will take on Everton in the third qualifying rank. League-wise, the board is expecting a top-half finish, and looking at the season preview, we're predicted to finish in fifth, with title odds of 50-1. to 1. Kicking things off with the Allianz Cup again, and it seems like we just cannot get past the group stage anymore. We had a nice victory against Aruca in the second round before being drawn in a group with Chivas and Porto. We beat Chivas, but drew with Porto to finish second in the group on goal difference. However, in the Taca de Portugal placard, things went much, much better. We advanced through the third round with a comfortable 6-0 win against Florenz before needing penalties to head past Nacional in the fourth round. This set up a huge fifth round tie against Braga. Abel Ruiz gave Braga the lead in the first half before Ollie McBurney popped up with an equaliser 10 minutes before the end of the game. Washington Corozo then gave Braga the lead again with just two minutes to play, only for McBurney to equalise yet again deep into injury time and send the game to extra time where Sunusi Ahali was able to win the tie with a nice finish from inside the area. That goal meant we advanced to the sixth round where we take on Sporting at home. It was a cagey tight game that went into extra time yet again until that man, Ollie McBurney, popped up to fire us into the semi-finals. At the semi-final stage, you have a home and an away leg, and we were drawn against Aruka for the first game being on the road. I thought this was going to be a tough tie, but Mika Beres turned into Superman and bagged an impressive four goals in a 5-1 win to take into the second leg. It was good that we did have the lead as Aruka won the game, 
1-0 in Amadora, but we managed to advance into the cup final with a 5-2 aggregate win. In the final, we took on Porto Morezi, who opened the scoring inside two minutes, but were quickly reduced to 10 men after Pedro Sa Polax Mika Berlis with an elbow. Once we had the man advantage, we were able to dominate the game, scoring four goals to run out 4-2 winners and lift the Taca de Portugal trophy. In the league, we managed to improve on last season's campaign, and we finished in fourth with 73 points, the same points total as Benfica. Porto went on to win their fourth title in a row, but were really closing that gap as they only had five more points than we did. This season, we entered continental competition in the Europa Conference League, but we had to qualify for the full competition. In the third qualifying round, we took on Everton and managed to win the home leg 2-1 to take a slender lead to Liverpool for the second leg. We scored early in the game, but goals from Callum Wilson and Rasmus Hodgland send the game into extra time, and we needed penalties to separate the two teams. Gabriel Strefeza missed the opening penalty for Everton before everyone else scored theirs to give Xhaka the opportunity to send us into the next round, which he duly did. This set up a playoff fixture against Dinamo Tbilisi from Georgia. However, this tie was much easier than the games against Everton as we picked up a nice 4-1 win on the road in the first game to put us in a great spot in the tie. Back home for the second leg, we extended the lead through a Gaspar header to secure a 5-1 aggregate win and qualify for the Conference League proper. We were drawn against Nefsi Baku, Riga, Bodo Glimt, Dinamo Batumi, FC Honka and Slavia Prague. We were great in the league phase, picking up four wins and a draw, meaning we finished in fourth in the league table and qualified for the knockout stages. First up was Asana from Kazakhstan and we were on the road first and managed to secure a one goal lead to take back to Portugal in a game that we really dominated and probably should have got more out of. Things were much more straightforward at home as goals from Gaspar, Cristo, McBurney and Winks saw us win the game 4-0 on the night and progress into the quarterfinals where we take on Hibs. This time we were at home first and asserted our dominance right off the bat. We opened the scoring in the first half before Kevin Nisbet scored a lucky equaliser for Hibs. We continued the relentless pressure and got two more goals in the final 10 minutes to take a 3-1 lead into the second leg. In Scotland, our Scotsman turned up as Ollie McBurney opened the scoring and Christo added the final nail in the coffin to see us win the tie 5-1 on aggregate. Somehow we were finding ourselves in the semi-finals where we would take on 48-time Greek champions Olympiakos. However, they offered relatively little resistance as we flew into a 3-0 lead in the first leg inside the first half with goals from McBurney, Samu and Beareth. Things didn't get better for Olympiakos in the second leg as Winked improved our lead from the spot and we added a fifth goal just before halftime to see us advance into the final. We came up against Italian side Atalanta in the final and right off the bat I thought this was going to be a step too far as Luckman and Sorloth put the Italians into a two goal lead. We did pull a goal back ourselves, but Sorloth regained that two goal lead for Atalanta just before half time. The boys had a stern half time team talk and looked a completely different side in the second half, and Beareth gave us a lifeline on the hour mark. Samu pulled the tie level with six minutes of the game to go and ultimately forced the game into extra time. The match momentum was definitely in our favour as Christo broke the offside trap to slot the ball into the back of the net in the 113th minute to see us win the Europa Conference League. Unsurprisingly, the board are ecstatic with me at this point, but you wouldn't know it looking at the finances for season four as we have five million pounds in the transfer budget and just a little bit of wiggle room in the wage budget. Going into season four, we had to make our own finances to make this team into a real contender and that meant moving on a key player for us in Xhaka who moved to Empoli for seven and a half million pounds. We were able to bring 11 players into the club in the summer, including Manchester United winger Amad Diallo who joined us on a free transfer. Another free transfer addition is Brazilian international Arta, who joined the club after his Juventus contract had come to an end. We did spend some cash to improve at the back as Belgium international Zeno van Housden joined from Monaco for £7.75 million. In addition, we raided the Premier League loan market and brought in Calvin Ramsey from Liverpool and Callum Doyle from Manchester City to add some much needed squad depth. These players have really improved this team and we have a much better balance of ability throughout this starting 11 and some fantastic rotation options to call on if needed. 
Competitions wise this season, we add the Super Taco where we take on league winners Porto and we swap the Conference League for the Europa League this season where we will enter in the league phase. League wise, we're predicted to finish in fourth this season with title odds of 20 to 1, so the media think we are better than Braga. We opened the season with the Super Taco where we took on last season's league winners Porto where we flew into a two goal lead before half time. Porto were able to pull a goal back via David Carmo but we were able to hold on to win our first trophy of the season. Was this a sign of things to come? In the Allianz Cup, we were drawn in the third phase Group B alongside Vittoria de Guilmarez and Gil Vicente. We managed to beat them both and to finish top of the group and advance into the semi-finals where we take on Porto yet again. This time, they got their own back to advance into the final. Icardi opened the scoring from the spot, which Mika Beareth was able to cancel out. However, goals from Gallino and another from Icardi was enough to see us exit the competition. Our defence of the Taca de Portugal got off to a flying start with comfortable victories against Oliveira do Hospital and Sporting Coliva before coming up against Porto Morens in the fifth round. We were on the road for the tie and took the lead in the first half with this Oli McBurney finish, but Samuel Muliteri pulled the tie level in the 81st minute. I thought we'd be heading to extra time, but Jorge Morales had other ideas, winning the game for us in the 90th minute with his tapping. This set up a sixth round tie against, yep, you guessed it, Porto. It seems like the Super Taco win for us had impacted them and even though we took an early lead, Porto pressed and pressed and ran out 4-1 winners on the night, sending us out of the second domestic cup competition this season. However, we would still have the last laugh domestically. We were relentless in the Liga Portugal, only losing twice all season, with both of those losses coming at the hands of Benfica. This form saw us top the league with a total of 86 points and break Porto's four-season span of dominance, pipping them to the title by just two points. This title win means we will be playing Champions League football next season, but for now we have another continental competition to discuss. We entered the Europa League in the league phase and this season we were handed the opposition of Real Betis, Dundee United, Genk, Nice, Galatasaray, Austria Vienne, Lyon and Club Bruges. It was almost a flawless league phase as we picked up seven wins and just one defeat. Those results meant that we finished fourth in the league table behind Liverpool, Spurs and Wolfsburg and qualifying for the knockout stages. The round of 16 threw up a spicy all Portuguese number as we were drawn against the only team that beat us twice in the league, Benfica. We were away in the first leg and really tried to throw this tie away. We took the lead twice in the game but thanks to two deflected own goals came out of the game with a 3-2 loss. However, the second leg caught me very much off guard as we managed to dominate Benfica, winning the game 5-0 with a hat-trick from Oli McBurney. He's really turning into a club legend at this point. Because of that win, we advanced into the quarterfinals where we would take on German side Eintracht Frankfurt. The first leg was in Germany and was an absolute barnstormer. We rushed out to a 3-0 lead inside the first 20 minutes and I thought things were going to be super easy here. Robert Andrich pulled a goal back with this lovely free kick before Jorge Morales received a straight red card two minutes later to see us play 70 minutes with 10 men. The man advantage seemed to rally Frankfurt and they continued to push against our tired legs and score three goals of their own without reply to win the game 4-3 on the night. Sadly for us, the second leg back in Portugal didn't get much better, but at least it was entertaining. Frankfurt scored another four goals in the game to ultimately win the tie 8-5 on aggregate and see our European adventure come to an end. All in all, our season was spectacular, adding the league title and the Super Taka to the trophies that we've already won. The board is buzzing with me, but still looking to sell the club, even with a new stadium in the pipeline. Financially, we have just shy of £9 million in the transfer budget and £200,000 a week in the wage budget to turn this club into a Champions League side. I guess that's over to you.